Here's the hard truth about the dreaded knee extension machine, AKA the big bad wolf of ACL recovery. The biggest controversy about this exercise is whether it's safe or not. And is the juice really worth the squeeze? The answer might surprise you. In this video, I'm going to break down the science behind this exercise and the stress that it puts on the ACL graft and whether or not you should use it. For those of you who don't know me or might be new to this channel, my name is John Call, and I'm a physical therapist specializing in ACL and knee injuries. ACL recovery is complex and I've seen traditional physical therapy fail countless people and I'm here to change that. Through my online coaching platform, ACLRX, I personally helped over 200 people fully recover from this injury to reclaim the active lifestyle that they love. Back to knee extensions. Spoiler alert, you should be using them, but you need to be strategic about how, and I'm going to share my favorite way on how I program them with my clients throughout the ACL recovery process. So where does the controversy come from? The biggest argument as to why many surgeons and physical therapists tell you to avoid this machine is that they believe it places too much stress on the ACL graft and can loosen it. So let's talk about what too much stress actually means. So the fancy term here is strain, meaning relative length change or stretch of the ACL graft. Do seated knee extensions place strain on the ACL graft? You betcha. But hold on, stress and strain isn't a bad thing. Without stress, our bodies would never get stronger. The real question is, how much is too much? A 2012 study by Escamilla and colleagues looked at forces on the ACL with common movements and exercises. What they find might surprise you. The forces placed on the ACL during a 12 rep maximum knee extension from zero to 90 degrees was less than walking. Crazy, I know. Other studies measuring ACL strain values show about 4% strain with knee extensions compared to the 13% strain on the ACL with each step of walking. That's two to three times more. And hey, nobody's telling you that walking is bad for your graft, right? There's been multiple studies showing how including loaded knee extension improved quadriceps strength compared to a plan that does not use them and how they don't cause any loosening or increased risk to the healing graft. But this false belief of loosening the graft has been so ingrained into the minds of healthcare professionals that even with all this research disproving this myth, this fear is being passed on to the people that they treat. And at the end of the day, guess who suffers? Hopefully, I've made it clear that this exercise is safe, but is the juice worth the squeeze? One of the biggest predictors of functional outcomes, reducing the risk of re-injury and long-term knee health is quadriceps muscle strength. What is the biggest deficit that we see one year and longer after ACL surgery? You guessed it, quadriceps muscle strength. So just how important is this? Well, one key metric that should be used to measure quad strength is a limb symmetry index, meaning we compare how strong your surgical quad is to the non-surgical quad. So 100% symmetry means that your quad strength is even between both legs. Now, for every 1% of strength loss in your surgical quad below 90%, the risk of re-injury increases 3%. So a symmetry score of 80% increases your risk by a whopping 30% of re-injury. Yeah, it's that important. Now, to truly know these numbers, we have to measure it. The problem, 55% of physical therapists aren't even measuring this, or if they're doing it, they're doing it incorrectly. But that's another story for another video. So how do we measure quad strength? There's a few correct ways to do that, which look like this, like this, or like this. And what do all three of these tests have in common? Well, they look a whole lot like the exercise that everyone tells you to avoid. Isn't that ironic? So you might be saying, John, I can get my quads strong with leg presses, squats, lunges, right? Which is partially true, but here's the problem. The body is a master compensator. And after ACL surgery, it will do everything it can to take stress off of your surgical knee and your quad. Research shows us that your body will use your hip muscles at the expense of your quads to move the weight, even when form looks good visually. So yes, of course, we need to be including things like squats, leg presses, step-ups, lunges in our ACL recovery. Absolutely. 
We just need to understand the limitations and how to coach these movements correctly, which an ACL specialist will be able to do for you. With the knee extension exercise specifically, especially if performed one leg at a time, will force the surgical quad to work hard. There is absolutely nowhere for it to run, nowhere for it to hide. It truly isolates the quad. Now that you know that you should be using them, it doesn't give us a license to be careless. Exactly when we start and how we use them will always be determined on a case-by-case -case basis. Everyone's journey is always a bit different. So the range of motion matters, the type of contraction matters, the weight, the sets, the reps, right? All that stuff matters. Now, with that being said, here are my general guidelines on how I often like to use them with my clients. But again, this is not individual medical advice. So here's the problem with healthcare professionals not using them. Number one, you miss out on all the amazing benefits of actually doing the exercise. But more importantly, it shows that your physical therapist is not staying up to date with the medical research. And if they aren't up to date with this, what other parts of their plan for you is outdated? Food for thought. Any questions, drop them in the comments below. And if your recovery isn't going as planned and you're ready to stop rolling the dice with your recovery and your knee health, I'd love to help you. Click the link below and schedule your free call with me to discuss a game plan on how to get you to be a stronger person than who you were before this injury. If you found this valuable, please give it a like, share it, and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video.